The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, third chapter, text number 11 through 19, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on December 27, 1968, in Los Angeles. Demigod, being pleased by sacrifice, will also please you, thus nourishing one another, and will reign general prosperity for all. Yes, this is a very important point. <coughs> the godless society, uh, they are thinking that everything is being done by nature. Nature is there, but there is a controller of nature. Just like this electricity. Electricity is natural power, but there is a powerhouse and there is a resident engineer. Similarly, everything supplied by nature, water supply, heat supply, air, so there is a controller, and he is called demigod. They are all appointed servants by the Supreme Lord. Uh, it is simply foolishness that nature is working automatically. This is rascal. They do not know. Uh, the so-called scientists who are thinking that everything is going on automatically. Yes, it is going on automatically, just like ah, the government affairs are going on automatically. A child can say that everything is going automatically, but a person who knows the government, the constitution, he knows how departmental management are going on. That is the difference between the so-called foolish person and one who knows the thing. One who knows the thing, the, he knows that everything is controlled by a person. That person is called demigod. So we have to satisfy. We are therefore the yoga. Sacrifice is recommended. Ah. So that is mentioned here. The demigod being pleased by sacrifice. Just like to the income tax officer. If you pay regularly your income tax, then there is no trouble. Everything will go on. Otherwise the state will enforce to exact income tax. So we are receiving heat from the sun. Similarly we are receiving rain. Don't you think that we have to pay some tax? That is equal. That in mind is basically because you must. Therefore so many sacrifices are recommended. If you do not offer those sacrifices, then there will be irregularity of rain, irregularity of heat, excessive heat, excessive cold, and people will suffer. This is the part. They do not know it. Uh, read it, part part. The demigods are empowered as administrators Yes, the demigods are empowered administrators of material affairs. How can you uh, uh, deny the existence of demigods? Wow. The supply of air, light, water, and all other benedictions and maintenance of the body and soul of every living entity are entrusted to the demigods who are innumerable assistants in different parts of the body of the Supreme Personality of God. Mm -hmm. Just like my body, different limbs are working and help me, helping me. I want to go somewhere. The limbs uh, or the part which is called leg, they will carry me. Similarly, by the supreme order of Krishna, all these demigods are acting just like my different parts of the body are acting. Yes, so. Their pleasures and displeasures are dependent on the performance of God by human beings. 
some of the yachtsmen are meant to satisfy the particular demigod. But even in so doing, Lord Vishnu is worshipped in all yachtsmen as the chief beneficiary. That's right. If you obey the department, say the police department, you are obeying the police department means you are obeying the government. Uh, nobody can manufacture a police department and force you to obey. Because it is one of the important departments of government, therefore as soon as there is police and stuff, you have to stop. You may be very a rich man, millionaire, but you have to obey the orders of the police, otherwise you will be prosecuted. And where from? That man is an ordinary man. Simply he stops you. How, why do you stop? Because you obey the government. Similarly, all obeisances offered to the demigods, they are meant for giving obeisances to the Supreme Law. That is the beginning. Wrong. It is stated also in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna himself is the beneficiary of all kinds of God. Yes, taxes. Treasury department collecting taxes. That is not uh, the tax officer or the treasurer is collecting for his personal self. He is collecting for the God. Similarly, these demigods accepting these different kinds of sacrifices, uh, they are on account of the Supreme Law. Therefore, ultimately you have to satisfy the Supreme Law. Uh, so, in this age, it is very uh, difficult to satisfy all the demigods differently. Uh, people are have so much harassed. The best thing is to satisfy directly the Supreme Law. And what is that simple method? Just chant Hare Krishna. Uh, because we are so fallen in this age, uh, uh, the simple chanting of glorification of the Lord will be uh, equal to uh, performances of all kinds of sacrifice. That is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavata. Jagai Sankirtana Prai Jaganti Smena. Those who are, uh, because each a uh, kind of sacrifice, a very costly affair. It is not possible in this age. Uh, tons of butter he wanted to serve, arrange for a sacrifice. Uh, it is very difficult to find out a pound of butter in a house. And where is the question of tons? Of course, in your country still butter is available. But in India, practically butter is very... So in, in one day the whole world will not see anymore butter or rice or wheat. Everything will be finished because with the age of advancement of the age of Kali, everything will deteriorate so badly that all supplies will be uh, stopped actually. At that time people will live just like animals. Uh, so this is the only main Krishna consciousness that in this age. Simply, in whatever condition you may be, you can simply sit down and chant. There is no expense. There is no loss. Simply chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And all demigods in, and the Supreme Personality of God, everyone will be satisfied. You will have no division. This is the program of Krishna consciousness. Wow. Therefore, ultimate satisfaction of the Lord is the chief purpose of all God. When he sacrifices the perfect people home, naturally the demigods in charge of the different deposits of supply of sleep, and there is no scarcity in the flow of natural products. Yes. Because after all, however tractor, machine, or farm arrangement you may make, Unless there is supply of heat and water, it is all useless. Uh, you cannot produce grains uh, just like wheat or rice or uh, pulses in your factory or by your will, uh, defying the nature's law. Oh, that you cannot do. Uh, real, your life is in the hands of the demigod. 
in the stock supply. Uh, sunshine in the stock supply, water supply, how you can produce? Therefore you have to satisfy them. Uh, people are uh, practically forgotten their duty, therefore they are suffering. Otherwise, if they follow the rules and regulations, there is no scarcity. Uh, the modern theory the population has increased, this is a nonsense theory. If there is production is sufficient, what is the question of population increase? Let population increase. The supplier will give you. In the Vedic literature we find, eka bhaunam vidadhati kama. That Supreme Lord is supplying everyone food. Why do you think of human society? What is the human society? Out of eight million four hundred thousand forms of life, there are only four hundred thousand forms of human life. And eight million forms, there are lower animals, birds, bees, aquatic. Who is supplying their foodstuff? Oh. Everyone is sumptuously fed by the grace of God. Why not you? You are suffering because you are disobeying. Therefore you are suffering. That is it. It is only the suffering, population theory, this theory, that theory, which is only the human society. Because they are regularly defying the existence of God. Science, science, science. Now there are so many suffering people. Why your science cannot uh, provide them for? So this is wrong theory. You have to satisfy the supreme supply. Then you get sufficient production and you'll be happy. God. The performance of Yasna is a great process. Ultimately, it is liberation from the material body. By performance of sacrifice, all activity becomes purified, as is stated in the Vedas. Yes. When you perform this life, we are performing here a sacrifice of some kirtan. Everything will find here purified. In this temple, you, you go, Corner to corner, he'll find everything sanctified, purified. Why? Because he has said this sacrifice of some kirtan is being performed. So as soon as you take up the process of sacrifice, automatically everything will be hygienic, purified, health, wealth, everything, complete. Go on. As we did explain in the following verse, by performance of Yasu, the eatable becomes sanctified. And by being sanctified food stuff, one's very existence becomes pure body. Yes. Even George Barnard said, he has written, you are what you eat. Your body is purified or impurified according to the food stuff you eat. Oh. Therefore we forbid, so don't eat this, don't eat that. You have got sufficient food, grains, meal, butter and fruits, sufficient. Why should you eat meat? Uh, that is not sanctified. But this is nature's product offered to Krishna and you eat and you become healthy and sanctified in mind, in body. Then you can understand Krishna consciousness, you can make progress in that way. If your body is uh, not sanctified, if it is impure, how can you understand the pure consciousness of Krishna consciousness? Therefore we have to follow the principles, regulations. Yeah. Huh? By the purification of existence, the final tissues in the memory become sanctified, and memory being sanctified, one can think of the path of liberation. Just like in our contaminated state, we become diseased. What is disease? As soon as you contaminate or infected by some impure thing, you become diseased. Similarly, our this disease, material disease, birth, death, old age, this is a, they are some kind of disease. Otherwise, I am spirit, soul, I am pure, as pure as God, because I am part and parcel of God. But due to my impurity of this material body, I am suffering. So if you purify your existence, then you get the quality in uh, complete pureness of God, you become happy. Anandamaya abhyasat, satchidananda vigraha, you become jolly. 
ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा सुन एज यू प्यूरिफाई योर सेल्फ एंड बिकम आइडेंटिफाई विद एक्सिस्टेंस ऑफ गॉड इमीडिएटली बिकम जॉयफुल नो एंगजाइट ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न तो यू हैव टू प्यूरिफाई योर एक्सिस्टेंस इफ यू कीप योर बॉडी इन प्यूरिफाइड देन हाउ कैन रियली बी प्यूरिफाइड कॉन्सियसनेस सो यू हैव टू डू इट स्ट्रॉन्ग वर्ड इज यूज सपोज देर इज मेन्शन देर इज रिकमेंडेशन दैट यू शुड परफॉर्म सूर्य योग्य सूर्य मीन्स दिस सन दिस सन इज सप्लाइंग यू सो मच हीट वर्म एंड डोंट यू वॉन्ट टू गिव इन सम टैक्स और सेटिस्फाइंग बाई सेटिस्फाइस सो दैट इज अवर ड्यूटी If you if you are receiving from me so many things, and if you do not at least acknowledge your gratitude, then you are a thief. Uh, we are receiving so many benefits through the agents of the supreme personality of Godhead, and if we, we do not acknowledge it, the so God is great. He is so kind. In spite of our so many faults, He is supplying us nice food stuff, nice everything. So how much ungrateful the human society has become? Just imagine, and they want peace and prosperity. Nonsense. Where is peace and prosperity? You must suffer. You must suffer. That is your view. Wrong. Oh. Wow. Thirteen. The devotees of the Lord are released from all sins because they eat food which is offered first. Exactly. Yes. The devotees. How much they are grateful? Krishna Prasad. Krishna, you are sent so nice fruit, nice flowers. First of all, even you are. Oh, God is very satisfied. Just like a boy, my dear father, this sweet meat is very nice. You take. A father knows the sweet meat was purchased by him, where the boy can get this sweet meat. But because the son is offering to the father, in, uh, father in love and affection, father is saying, "Oh." You mean it's very nice. Therefore, we cannot offer any Krishna. Krishna is self-sufficient. He does not uh, require your offering of this food stuff that much. But if you offer with affection and love, he accepts. And as soon as Krishna accepts, your life is uh, sanctified immediately. Therefore, you should eat Krishna prasadam, nothing more. Not in the hotel, not in the restaurant. Simply Krishna Prasad. That will give me pity for. All. So. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment, they are the only things. Yes. Uh, simply, the nice foods are palatable dishes. You can prepare palatable dishes for Krishna. There are hundreds and thousands of preparation. But as soon as you prepare for yourself. Or you can't try to satisfy your tongue, uh, then you are bound up by the laws of nature. Anything uh, that because nah, that is sinful, sinful. If you do not acknowledge, if you do not acknowledge the authority, if you do not uh, feel your gratitude for the supply, that is, then you are a thief. Uh, especially it is mentioned, it is thief. I am taking your things. I am eating. But I am not feeling any gratitude for you. Then I am a thief. Yes, son. Fourteen. All living bodies subsist on food grains. Food grains are produced from rain. Rain comes from performance of sacrifice, and sacrifice is born of man's work. Mm, this is a cycle. Cycle. Uh, we are living on food grains. Uh, We cannot live on meat eating. Uh, it is not possible. Uh, however, a great meat eater, maybe he must have some grain, some vegetable. 
that is his life. Yes. Therefore, grains, vegetables, they are actually all food. Now, I am living and getting energy by eating grains and vegetables. And how my energy should be utilized? It should be utilized for the purpose from where I am getting energy. I am getting energy for, from the Supreme Lord by supply of this food stuff. Therefore, my energy should be utilized for the service of the Supreme Lord. That is called sacrifice. So I should be strong enough to offer sacrifice to the Lord. By sacrifice, the demigods, the Lord will be pleased and there will be sufficient rain. There will be again production, again you will eat, again you will get strength, again you will offer sankirtan. This cycle. This cycle must go on. Oh. This cycle. You get from the Supreme Lord supplied by uh, natural ways, you get strength, and your strength should be utilized not for sense gratification. Uh, because I am now very stout and strong, oh, let me enjoy senses. Then you are sinful. And if you use your strength for satisfying the Supreme Lord, then your energy is properly utilized. This is you. Activity from the rising from the Vedas, and the Vedas spring from the Supreme Godhead. Therefore, the all pervading transcendence is eternally situated in the act of sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. So, God, does not the karma or the necessity for work for the satisfaction. Yogya se karma. Yogya means sacrifice, artha for the purpose of and karma, fruitive activity. Everyone is engaged in some activity. But what shall be the purpose of such activity? Yajñārtha. Yajñārtha means simply to satisfy Lord Vishnu or Krishna. That should be the purpose. Yajñārtha karma. Yes. We have to work for the satisfaction of the Yajñārtha Purusha, Vishnu, and then we must find the direction of work in Brahma or the transcendental Vedas. The Vedas are therefore opposed to working direction. Anything performed without... Just like uh, you get license to do some business. Why? <coughs> the government gives you license to do some business. That means if you want to do business, you must satisfy the government. You cannot do him really. You cannot do. This is Veda. One who is law-abiding, subject. Uh, similarly, anyone who is following the course of Vedas or scriptures, he is actually working. Otherwise, uh, persons who are violating, he is becoming implicated. Criminal. Similarly, if we defy the rules and regulation of Vedas or scripture, then we are being implicated, a uh, criminal, for being punished. Therefore, work should be yajnat, for the satisfaction of Vishnu or the Supreme God. That should be the mode of work. Anything performed without the direction of the Vedas is called by karma. Vikarma. Or unauthorized work, or sinful work. Yes. Therefore, one should always take direction from the basis. The same example, as I always cite, uh, uh, that your direction is uh, keep to the right. Uh, then if you don't keep to the right, if you go to the left, uh, then it is vikarma. Your driving is unlawful. You are immediately Similarly, as soon as we perform vikarma, karma, vikarma, karma, there are three kinds of work. So vikarma means against the rules. So as soon as we act against the rules, immediately uh, we are bound up by the criminal code. Therefore, if we work for the Supreme Government, Krishna, uh, simply for his satisfaction, there is no vikarma. There is no criminality. 
There is no criminality. Because ultimately the Supreme Lord is to be satisfied. So if you work for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, you are not subjected to the any criminal law. You are free. That is liberation. Gone. As one has to work with ordinary life by the direction of the state, similarly one has to work on the direction of the supreme state of the Lord. Such instructions in the Vedas are directly manifested from the breathing of the supreme personality of Godhead. It is said, all the four Vedas, namely the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, and Artara Veda, are emanations from the breathing of the great personality of God. The Lord being potent can speak by his breathing air, as is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita. Yes. Uh, we should not think how it is that Lord gave his laws through breathing. Uh, because with breathing we cannot speak anything. That means I am calculating the strength of God with my capacity. Uh, the Brahma Sangita says, no, Angani Jasta Sakalindra Vitti Manti. Say every part, every limb of, of the body of Krishna, the Supreme Person, can act of other limbs. Just like I can see through the eyes only. But Krishna can see through his finger also. That is his omnipotency. Uh, omnipotency means every limb has got the potency of all other limbs. That is called omnipotence. We speak of omnipotency while we do not know the meaning of omnipotence. Uh, this is omnipotence. That uh, by his glance, God created uh, by this world by his glance. So khata, so asujata, these are the uh, things. So uh, we can uh, say that how is that? Simply God saw and there was creation. Yes, that is omnipotent. Why do you think in terms of your capacity? Uh, that is materially. As soon as you think of God in my capacity, that is materially. You have to accept. As it is said in the Vedas, then you understand what is God. Otherwise you cannot. God. The Lord being potent can speak by breathing air as is concerned in the Brahman Samhita. So the Lord has omnipotent performs to each of his senses the actions of all other senses. In other words, the Lord can speak through his breathing and he can impregnate by his eyes. It is said that he glanced over the material nature and thus fathered all the living entities. So, after impregnating the conditioned soul into the womb of the material nature, he gave his direction in the Vedic wisdom as to how such conditioned soul can return home back to God. We should always remember that the conditioned soul in material nature are all eager for material enjoyment. And the Vedic directions are so made that one can satisfy one's perverted desire then return to Godhead, having finished his so-called enjoyment. It is a chance for the conditioned soul to attain liberation. Therefore, the conditioned soul must try to follow the process of Yasna by becoming Krishna conscious. Those who have not followed the Vedic injunction may adopt the principles of Krishna consciousness, and that will take the place of performance of Vedic Yasna. <coughs> My dear Arjuna, a man who does not follow the prescribed daily system of sacrifice certainly needs the life of sin. For a person delighting only in the senses lives in vain. Yes, this is very important. Thank you, God. Very important. Go on. The nominalist philosophy of work very hard and enjoy sense gratification is condemned herewith by the Lord. For those who want to enjoy this material world, the above mentioned cycle of sacrifices is absolutely necessary. 
One who does not follow such regulations in living is living a very risky life, being condemned more and more. By nature's law, this human form of life is specifically meant for self-realization in either of the three ways, namely karma yoga, jhana yoga, or bhakti yoga. There is no necessity of rigidly following the performances of the prescribed doctrine. Such transcendentalists are above vice and virtue. But those who are engaged in sense gratification require purification by the above mentioned cycle of yajna performance. There are different kinds of activities. Those who are not Krishna conscious are certainly engaged in sensory consciousness and therefore they need to execute pious work. The yajna system is planned in such a way that the sensory conscious person may satisfy the desire without becoming entangled in the reaction to such sense gratifying work. The prosperity of the world depends not on our own efforts, but on the background arrangements of the Supreme Lord, directly carried out by the Hemisphere. Therefore, these sacrifices are directly aimed at the particular demigods mentioned in the basis. Indirectly, it is attractive to Krishna consciousness, because when one masters the performance of Yajna, one is sure to become Krishna conscious. If, having performed Yajna, one does not become Krishna conscious, such principles are counted as only moral code. One should not, of course, limit his progress to the point of moral code, but should transcend them to attain Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is transcendent. Moral codes, uh, there are two, material perfection. Of course, one who has not attained material perfection, he cannot uh, attain to uh, Krishna consciousness. Just like uh, one who has not passed his uh, graduation in the university, he cannot take up law course. That is law in India. Uh, but one who has taken to the law course, it is to be understood that he has passed his graduation in the college. Similarly, one who, is, who has taken Krishna consciousness as a seriousness, then it is to be understood that he has performed all kinds of sacrifice. That is the reason. But one who is not Krishna consciousness, he must abide by the rules of sacrifices. Uh, but in this age, it is very difficult to follow all the rules and regulations of sacrifice. Therefore, it is the greatest gift of Lord Chaitanya that if come directly to Krishna consciousness, everything will be done. So Krishna consciousness is so nice. Immediately you rise to the transcendental platform, simply by chanting Hare Krishna. One who is, however, taking pleasure in himself, who is illumined in himself, who rejoices in and is satisfied with himself only, fully satiated, for him there is no need. Here it is plainly said by Lord Krishna, the self, one who is taking pleasure in self. How we can take pleasure in self? As soon as we engage ourselves, our self, uh, with the Supreme Self, that is enjoyed. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> Anandamaya Vyasa, uh, the Supreme Lord is joyful. Just like uh, if you mix with a joyful society, a joyful person, then automatically you become joyful. There is no necessity uh, of becoming joyful uh, separately. That association will make you joyful. Uh, if you mix with a society criminal, automatically you become criminal. Uh, there is no necessity of learning uh, criminality separately. By association you will do that. Similarly, if you associate with the supreme joyful, Krishna, automatically you become joyful. This is Krishna consciousness. Automatically. There is no necessity separately how to become joyful. Simply by association. Therefore here it is said that one who rejoices in, that rejoices by association with the Supreme. 
and is satisfied with the self only. With self, myself, what I am. My identity is that I am eternal servant of God. So as soon as I engage myself in the service of God, that is my self-realization. And if I enjoy in that self-realization, then I have no other duty. Finish all I finish all it. All sacrifice, everything. Complete. A person who is fully Krishna conscious and by his act in Krishna consciousness is fully satisfied, no longer has anything to perform as his duty. Due to his becoming Krishna conscious, all the dirty things within are instantly cleansed. Ordinary, ordinarily and effective many, many thousands of years for God to perform. By such clearing of consciousness, one becomes fully confident of his eternal position in relationship with the Supreme. His duty does become self-illuminated by the grace of the Lord, and therefore he no longer has anything to do in terms of the Vedic injunction. Such a Krishna conscious person is no longer interested in material activity and no longer takes pleasure in material arrangements like with wine, women, and similar infatuations. 18. A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duty, nor has he any reason not to perform such work, nor has he any need to depend on any other living being. 19. Therefore, without being attached to the fruits of activity, one should act as a matter of duty, for by working without attachment, one attains the supreme. This supreme is the personality of God for the devotee and liberation for the person. A person acting for Krishna or in Krishna consciousness under proper guidance and without attachment to the results of the work is certainly making progress towards the supreme goal of life. Indirectly, Arjuna is told that he should fight the battle of Krishna without attachment in the interest of Krishna because Krishna wants him to fight. To be a good man or a non-violent man is also a personal attachment, but to act on behalf of the Supreme... Yes, to be a good man, this consciousness is, I am very good man. Or to bad man, I am very bad man. But if you become Krishna conscious, I am neither good man nor bad man, I am Krishna's man, that's all. Finish. Finish. I'll be saying, I am Krishna's man. That's all. If Krishna wants to kill you, I'll kill you. If Krishna says, you do that, I do that. That's all. So I am Krishna's man. So he is immediately transcendental to all goodness and badness. All right, stop here. Any question? Yes. If Krishna orders, he shall do, but not purposely at your whims. There is nothing wrong for a Krishna conscious person. But what we think materially wrong, if it is ordered by Krishna, we shall do it. But Krishna, there is no wrong. Just like uh, the government order somebody to be hanged, that means killed. So that does not mean the government becomes condemned. But if I kill, I immediately become condemned. The government is still pure, because for half purpose the government can order somebody to be hanged and somebody to be rewarded. The everything is justice. Uh, similarly, when Krishna says, you do this, we have no consideration whether material calculation it is good or bad. Yes, but we cannot do on our own account, then it is implication. That is the technique. Uh, don't think that we are now Krishna conscious, we are Krishna's person, we can do anything. Just like if a policeman thinks that I am government man, I can do anything, whatever I like. That is wrong. You cannot do that. But if Krishna orders, then it can.
I say that you can go to Santa Fe. What is the harm? What is wrong there? Anywhere, if Krishna says that you can go to the sun planet, what is wrong there? And if Krishna desires that he, can, he should go to sun planet, then he will go. What is wrong there? There is nothing wrong. You have to ask what Krishna says. It doesn't matter what he says. You should not select Krishna's order according to your choice. You should accept Krishna's order by Krishna's choice. If Krishna says you go to hell, yes, I am going to hell. That's all. Sarabha Parga Narakesha Vitullata Darshana. For a Krishna conscious person, there is no distinction that this is hell, this is heaven. Ah. That's why we have come here to preach Krishna consciousness. We have no distinction between loss and jealousy and being loved. Wherever we are, I am in Krishna consciousness, that is being loved. That's all. I don't live in Los Angeles or anywhere. I live in Krishna consciousness. I preach Krishna consciousness. Therefore I live in Krishna. So your principle should be like that. You be fully in Krishna consciousness, you forget all other things. Krishna is all-pervading, therefore your living is all-pervading. Is that all right? Okay. Any other question? Hmm? Yes, it has already begun. Uh, you are killing cows, the source of butter. Now, time will come, there will be no more cows misusing. Then where will you get butter? You cannot manufacture in your factory a cow or butter. Huh? You should. Otherwise you are ungrateful. You are drinking milk, you are uh, taking so, so much butter, milk product, and as gratitude you are killing cows. You should be ashamed. Even if you have no human feeling, you suck the breast of your mother and kill. Is that humanity? So, uh, this will be, in due course, the milk supply will stop. That is stated in the Srimad Mahavad. There will be no more milk supply at the end of this television. Three, four things will be stopped. Grains, sugar, and milk will be stopped. And fruits will not be uh, without any pulp. It will simply seed. Just like in mango, there is seed and pulp. In future, you will simply have seed, no pulp. So you, you, you will eat mango simply by tasting the seed. Uh, there will be no more mango pulp. These are stated in the Bible. The people are so foolish that they are continually committing sinful activities. Therefore, yoga is recommended. But they cannot perform yoga also. The only alternative is to take to Krishna consciousness to save you from all risky life. Yes. 
So when they are, like they, when they say they have a surplus of grains now, they are growing these great mountains of grain. It means that in the future there will be no grains for this kind of reason. Yes. As soon as we make misuse, the supply will be stopped. After all, the supply is not in your control. And you cannot manufacture all this. You can kill thousands of cows daily, but you cannot generate even one ant. <coughs> and you are very much proud of your science. Just produce one ant in the laboratory, moving with independence. And you are killing so many animals? Why? So how long this will go? Everything will stop. Just like a child, mother is giving good, nice food stuff and is spoiling. So what the mother will do? All right. From tomorrow will not get. That is natural. Is it true that Krishna has always been in this planet? Huh? Is it true that Krishna has always been in this planet simply because of the presence of the world? No, Krishna appears not in consideration of this planet, but just like uh, there is a headquarter uh, as of the governor or some government officer in a particular place. Similarly, when Krishna appears in this universe, He comes uh, in this planet, in that Mathura Vrindavan. Therefore it is called so sanctified. Whenever He appears, He appears there. And that Vrindavan uh, happens to be situated within this planet. So this planet uh, is very fortunate in that sense. Yes. Yes. When people realize there's no more better, would they not I'll get past everything to realize it's dead? What is that? When people realize when there's no more better, hmm. people realize they've made mistakes or will they get past A sinful, sinful man never realizes his mistake. Therefore he is miscreant. You ask any miscreant, any criminal, so you have done wrong, he will be angry. Murkha yupati sari prakupaya santa nathanta. So, the miscreants and sinful, they cannot realize unless they are in good association and blessed. So therefore, good association requires. We are giving chance, this temple is open to give people to good association. Please come, try to understand. And if one is fortunate, he understands, he takes to this principle, and that becomes, ah, oh, I have a disciple. Purified gradually, but uh, if you, therefore, in this age, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended that you do not require to change your position. You simply try to hear about Krishna uh, from the rightful source. That's it. Then everything will be all right. Very good. Every one of us has mistaken or whatever you may call. But Krishna is so kind that He uh, keeps his book, Bhagavad Gita, he sends his representative, he comes himself as Lord Chaitanya to deliver. He sends Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so many arrangements, but we don't take advantage. We are so full and sinful. But still, the propaganda will go on. Just like father, however uh, misguided a son may be, Whenever the father gets a chance, he says, My dear son, don't do this, it is not good, you do this. 
So that is the duty of the father. Similarly, we are bent upon continuing our sinful activities, but there is sufficient arrangement by Krishna to instruct us and to lead us back to God and back to God. Uh, why do you have answer of the animals being starved? You take care of yourself. You don't be philanthropic. Oh, they will starve. Let me eat. What is this philanthropy? Krishna is supplying food. If he uh, dies out of starvation, it is Krishna's responsibility. Nobody should die of starvation. That is a false fear. Have you seen any animal dying of starvation? Have you got any experience? Have you seen any bird died of starvation? There is no question of starvation from in the kingdom of God. We are manufacturing this theory for our own satisfaction, sense satisfaction. There is no question of starvation in the law of God. Elephant eats hundred pounds at a time. Who is supplying food stuff? There are millions of elephants in the uh, African jungle and Indian jungle. They require one hundred pounds at a time to eat. Who is supplying food? So there is no question of starvation in the kingdom of God. The starvation is part the so-called civilization. Yes. Are you other animals? Are they? You, you count amongst the animals? You classify yourself with the animals? No, not all. You may be, but we are not. Do you like to be classified with the animals? No, no. Do you like yourself? Do you like to be classified? Huh? Why? Why you are talking then? Why you have come here? You respect for all and you kill animals? Then why do you say that? What is your question? Why a man is not meant to be that in nature the animals What is the question I am going to say? You say, why a man is not meant to Hmm. Why is some animal meat? Meat? He's saying that we are we are we are animals also now. We are not meant to eat meat, but other animals are permitted to. So, uh, other animals they meet but they follow the nature's law. They don't eat grain. No, no, you don't follow. Just like a tiger, a tiger eats meat, but tiger does not come to eat grains and fruits. But you eat meat and grains, fruits, milk, whatever you can get, you eat. Why? Is that natural? Tiger will never come to claim on the grains. Oh, you have got so much grain, give me. No. Even there are hundreds of bags of grains, you don't care. But he will pounce upon it. That is his natural instinct. But why do you take grains, fruits, milk, Meat and whatever you get. What is this? You are neither animal nor human being. Misusing your humanity. You should think that what is suitable for me? A tiger may eat uh, a meat. It is a tiger. But I am not tiger. I am human being. 
And if I got sufficient grains, fruits, vegetables, and other things God has given, why should I go to kill a poor animal? This is human. You are animal, plus human. If you forget your humanity, then you are animal. So we are not simple animals. We are animal plus humanity. If we increase our quality of humanity, then our life is perfect. But if we remain in animality, then our life is imperfect. So we have to increase our human consciousness. That is Krishna consciousness. That is Krishna consciousness. What is the purpose of eating? To live. If you can live very peacefully, very nicely, with good health, by eating so many varieties of foodstuff given by Krishna, why should I kill an animal? This is an animal. Why should I imitate an animal? Then what is the difference between animal and human being? If you have no discretion, if you have no consciousness, Besides that, scientifically, your teeth is meant for eating vegetables. The tiger has eat for eating meat. Nature has made it like that. Uh, it has to kill another, and therefore he has got milk, he has got teeth, uh, he has got strength. But you have no such strength. You cannot kill a cow like that, pounce it like cow. Eh? You have to make slaughter house and sit down at your home. Somebody may slaughter and you can eat very nicely. What is this? You do like that. Pounce upon a cow and eat. You cannot do that. <laughs> you cannot do that. Eh? Nature's law, that is, he is, Kaiser is made by nature's law in that way. So therefore, he can do that. You can do it. Your nature is different. You have got discrimination, you have got conscience, you are claiming civilized human being. So you should utilize this thing. That is Krishna concept. Perfect concept. So human life is meant for uh, raising oneself to the perfection of consciousness, and that is Krishna consciousness. We cannot remain in tiger consciousness. That is not humanity. Yes, that's how we fall on from higher to lower. Then we make progress. Again come to this human being. This is a bhaya media with good consciousness. If you utilize your good consciousness, then you go still higher, go to God. But if you don't use your higher consciousness, then you go to down. This is going on. Cycle of birth and death. This human form of life is meant for self-realization, God-realization. If you don't uh, use properly uh, this life for God-consciousness or Krishna-consciousness and go back to the uh, kingdom of God, then we have to suffer again in the eight million four hundred thousand species of life cycle, one after another. That is, that is our choice. So, uh, the best choice is to take to Krishna consciousness or God consciousness and a life is perfect. Don't be misguided. 
take to God consciousness, Krishna consciousness, and your life, then it will be proper use of the human form of life. Otherwise, if we indulge in meat eating like tiger, I may get get life like a tiger next life, but what is the use? Suppose if I become very strong tiger in my next life, is that very good promotion? Do you know the life of tiger? They cannot eat even daily. They pounce upon one animal and keep it secretly and they eat for a month the decomposed and flesh. Because it is not possible to get chance kill an animal. God will not give that such chance. You see? It is natural. And in the jungle, wherever there is a tiger, all animals will go out. They will also try to protect themselves, self-protection. So, rarely, when he is too hungry, then God gives him a chance to pounce upon another one. Uh, tiger cannot get so many palatable dishes daily. Oh. It is in human form of life. If we miss you, then we are... We have got all facilities. And if we misuse it, then go to the tiger life. Be very strong with punching capacity. Yes, sir. All right, chant, please.